Rhino horn has been the subject of fascination, myth, and controversy for centuries. From ancient beliefs in its mystical healing powers to modern-day black markets where it is traded for astronomical prices, the horn of the rhinoceros continues to fuel misunderstanding and misinformation. At the heart of the issue lies one simple truth, rhino horn is not what most people think it is. Despite its perceived rarity and supposed medicinal properties, the reality of what rhino horn truly is, and what it is not, could dramatically reshape our global approach to rhino conservation and shift public perception in a direction that may one day help save the species. First, we must address one of the most widespread misconceptions, the composition of rhino horn. Contrary to popular belief, rhino horn is not made of bone, ivory, or any mystical substance. In fact, it is composed almost entirely of keratin, the same protein that makes up human hair and fingernails. Structurally, rhino horn is more similar to a compacted clump of hair than to the tusks of elephants, which are made of dentin and enamel. This makes the horn far less unique or exotic than many assume. Scientific studies, including those conducted by the Ohio University and the American Museum of Natural History, confirm that the rhino horn is essentially a dense mass of keratinized filaments, growing from the skin and continually regenerating throughout the rhino's life. In practical terms, it's a glorified toenail, albeit one that can grow up to several feet in length and serve multiple purposes in the wild. Despite this rather unromantic biological reality, rhino horn has become one of the most valuable materials on the illegal wildlife market, often fetching prices higher than gold or cocaine per kilogram. This valuation stems not from its actual properties, but from human mythology, tradition, and status-seeking behavior. In many cultures, particularly in parts of Asia, rhino horn has long been believed to possess medicinal qualities. In traditional Chinese medicine, it has been used to cool the blood, reduce fever, and detoxify the body. Some claims even suggest that it can cure cancer or act as an aphrodisiac, although there is no scientific evidence to support these assertions. Indeed, clinical research has consistently shown that rhino horn has no medicinal benefit beyond that of a placebo. Consuming powdered rhino horn is, in effect, no more therapeutic than chewing on your own fingernails. The perpetuation of these myths has not only led to the slaughter of thousands of rhinos, but also empowered criminal syndicates who capitalize on public ignorance. In Vietnam, where demand for rhino horn has surged in recent decades, it is seen as a luxury item, something that denotes wealth, power and social status. Rich businessmen may gift rhino horn powder to associates as a sign of respect, or consume it as a hangover cure after extravagant parties. The horn rather than being viewed through a scientific lens, becomes symbolic, a trophy, a talisman, a miracle cure, or a sign of masculine virility. These social constructs fuel demand, and that demand in turn, feeds into an elaborate black market ecosystem with devastating consequences for rhinos. The impact of this demand is horrifying. All five species of rhinos, white, black, greater one-horned, Indian, Sumatran and Javan, have suffered dramatic population declines, largely due to poaching. Armed gangs with sophisticated equipment, night vision gear, and even helicopters infiltrate protected reserves to kill rhinos for their horns. Sometimes, the animals are tranquilized and their horns sawn off while they are still alive, leading to a slow and agonizing death. In many cases, conservationists and rangers are also at risk, some have died defending rhinos from poachers. The price of these horns creates an incentive that transcends borders and moral boundaries. And yet, if the public fully understood that rhino horn holds no real medical value and is biologically akin to toenails, would the demand persist at such a level? Efforts to combat this crisis have taken many forms. Conservation organizations, governments, and scientists have engaged in awareness campaigns to educate the public about the true nature of rhino horn. These campaigns often center on the idea that destroying the demand is more effective than merely policing the supply. For instance, some creative initiatives have focused on dispelling the myth of the horn's medicinal properties through documentaries, advertisements, and celebrity endorsements. In 2016, the Nail Biters campaign in Vietnam used a series of provocative posters equating rhino horn with human nails, urging people to reconsider the logic of their consumption. Another controversial approach has been the development of synthetic or lab-grown rhino horn. Several biotech companies have engineered keratin-based substitutes that are molecularly identical to natural horn. The idea is that by flooding the market with fake but indistinguishable alternatives, the economic incentive for poaching might be reduced. However, this strategy raises ethical and logistical questions. 
Critics argue that legitimizing any form of horn trade, real or synthetic, could perpetuate the myth of its value rather than dismantle it. There's also the risk of these synthetic horns entering the market under the guise of authenticity, further confusing consumers and regulators alike. In some African nations, conservationists have gone to extraordinary lengths to protect rhinos, including dehorning live animals to make them less appealing to poachers. While this process is safe for the rhino and the horn does grow back, it's a desperate measure that speaks to the severity of the crisis. These rhinos are essentially mutilated as a preventative strategy, all because of human ignorance about the horn's true nature. Meanwhile, armed patrols, drones, and advanced surveillance technologies are employed across national parks in South Africa, Kenya, Namibia, and elsewhere to deter poaching. While these security measures are partially effective, they are resource-intensive and often unsustainable without continuous funding and political support. At the root of all these efforts is a fundamental question. Why do humans continue to assign such tremendous value to a body part that offers no proven benefit? The answer may lie in psychology and the power of myth. Throughout history, humans have attached symbolic meanings to animal parts, from tiger bones to bear bile, infusing them with qualities we desire, such as strength, virility, or purity. These associations become embedded in culture, passed down through generations, and often reinforced by anecdotal success stories or selective memory. Even when scientific evidence contradicts the myth, the emotional and cultural resonance remains strong. Breaking this cycle requires more than information, it requires empathy, education, and a shift in collective consciousness. Education plays a crucial role in shaping that consciousness. In regions where rhino horn is consumed, targeted education initiatives can help younger generations see rhinos not as resources, but as sentient beings with intrinsic value. Schools, media, and community leaders can be powerful allies in dismantling harmful beliefs and promoting wildlife ethics. At the same time, global consumers, particularly those in the West, must also confront their role in the problem. While direct consumption may be concentrated in Asia, international tourism, fashion, and investment often intersect with wildlife exploitation in indirect ways. Thus, rhino conservation is not just a regional issue, it is a global responsibility. One promising shift in recent years is the rise of ecotourism. Countries like Namibia and Botswana have developed community-based conservation models where local people benefit economically from protecting rather than killing rhinos. Tourists pay to see rhinos in the wild, stay in eco-lodges, and support local guides, creating a financial incentive to keep rhinos alive. This approach helps bridge the gap between conservation and community development, ensuring that people who live alongside wildlife are active participants in their protection. Such models challenge the false dichotomy between nature and economy and demonstrate that coexistence is possible. Technology, too, is changing the game. With advancements in genetic forensics, authorities can now trace seized rhino horns back to specific parks or individuals, helping prosecute poachers and dismantle trafficking networks. Artificial intelligence and predictive analytics allow rangers to anticipate poaching hotspots and respond more effectively. Even blockchain technology is being explored as a means to track legal wildlife products and prevent laundering of illegal items. These innovations offer hope, but they are not a substitute for the cultural change needed to destroy the root of the problem, demand based on myth. Perhaps one of the most compelling aspects of this crisis is the emotional connection people form with individual rhinos. Stories like that of Sudan, the last male northern white rhino, who died in 2018, captured global attention and brought the issue into the mainstream. Sudan's gentle nature, his caretaker's devotion, and the tragic reality of his extinction sparked a wave of empathy that numbers and statistics never could. His story became a rallying cry for conservation and a poignant reminder of what is lost when myths overpower science and empathy. Such moments have the power to shift public opinion, galvanize action, and ultimately, rewrite the narrative. In conclusion, rhino horn is not what you think it is. It is not magical. It is not medicine. It is not a symbol of strength or prestige. It is keratin, biologically mundane, functionally replaceable, and spiritually neutral. The myths surrounding it have caused immense suffering, not just to rhinos, but to the ecosystems they support, the rangers who protect them, and the communities affected by the illegal wildlife trade. Understanding the truth about rhino horn is more than a scientific correction, it is a moral imperative. As long as the myth endures, rhinos will continue to die.